The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 27th. The terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. Send me an email. Send it off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside the Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. And we have a mixed bag, just like we did yesterday, the day before, the day before that out there. So we're getting used to that. Mixed markets. you got the Dow trading up 47 points. This S&P is down two. NASDAQ 100 is up four. Russell's up five. Semis are down 39. Trendies are off 73. Gold's trading up 26 bucks, one and one-tenth percent. Silver's up a half percent or 13 pennies. Lights Recruit is up 90 cents, a little over one percent there. Natural gas back just a smidgen and 30 treasury up Three tenths were set, that is 13 ticks, printed out at 119.11. Our leader in the clubhouse to the upside is MicroStrategy, up 2% or 28 bucks. Super Micro, 23 bucks, nearly 3%. Palo Alto Networks, 5%, 17 buck Roonies. Adobe's up 16, a little over 3% there. ServiceNow is up 15, that's about 2% to the upside. Our movers and our shakers to the downside become uh, Aero Environment, down 26 bucks. Four, nearly four, 13 percent, a little over 13 percent. McKesson Corp, 13 bucks, 2 percent. Sencora down 11 bucks, 5 percent. Goldman Sachs up 11 bucks, 2 percent. And Micron is down uh, nearly 9. That's a 6 percent move there. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's begin our day by taking a look at that New York Stock Exchange Advanced Klein Oscillator. And here we got. We've got this still trading below the zero threshold level. Uh, as long as price remains below that, it's signal to you and I is that sellers are the ones in control of the market. However, we take a look at uh, where the VIX is trading. VIX is trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. That offsets that signal because this tells us that buyers are the one with the edge. So you got one that says buyers have the edge. The other says sellers have the edge. Is it any wonder that we have mixed bags every morning that we start this show? My guess is the answer to that is no. What else is it that I can show you out here? Well, one thing that we can take a look at, there was a new profile that was attempting to form inside of the Dow Equity Future contract. I believe we discussed that yesterday. In fact, if we put up this chart here, this I'll stay on this screen, I'll just simply expand out the chart. You'll see that this profile on the black background chart actually formed a couple of days ago. It is just forming as we speak right now. Well, formed yesterday and confirmed on the uh, white background charts. It's got slightly different profile levels. Here you see 39,191 uh, on the uh, white background screens, which I'll show you because you can take a picture of both of these. It's at 39,090. We take a look at the center on this chart, 39,314, 39,350 on the white background charts. And in resistance on the uh, white background, so up 39,739. Here we've got 39,928. 
two different sets of profiles. Yeah, I wish they were both the same, but I take a look at it as life is happening for us. And so we've got two sets of data to use to navigate the markets on its move higher, which is really what the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract is signaling to you and I. The reason that it's signaling that to you and I, we'll go switch over to the other charts out here momentarily. You'll see that price is trading above its green oscillator and change line. And it's trading above the center of that uh, bullish structured profile. So let's put up those white background charts. You're looking at bottom left. Now I'm just going to expand it. Now we're all looking at the exact same thing. Now when price trades above the center of a bullish structured profile, that increases the odds of move up to the top of that profile. And it especially it increases the odds when you have a green oscillator and change line. So at this stage here, what's only holding back the Adao Equity Future contract is its weekly profile level. And we can say, oh, I don't have the weekly here. Um, the weekly profile level of resistance is at 39,618. So if price is able to close above 39,618, we're at 39,569, then that's signaling to you and I, price should make that move up towards 39,739 or 39,928. So that's really the newest piece of news that I can provide to you. We take a look at the ES and the NQ. You can see there's just a consolidation with the topping pattern out there, that topping pattern of the TD9s. Uh, the TD9 count patterns out there. You do have a wave number seven pattern on the ES. You don't have that inside the NQ. So we've taken a look at the uh, Dow. Dow equity view contract is suggesting a move higher. In the case of the ES and the NQ, what they really need to do is close above those green oscillator and change lines. And those right now are 5552 for the ES mini. And for the NQ, the number is currently at 20070 is what we'll call it, 20070. So if you begin to see price trading above that, we should continue to move higher for the NQ, that is. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, it has a buy the D point bottom. It continues to trade with inside that swing point that formed that pattern on June 17th. But if it can clear that red oscillator and change line, at the moment in time, that's printing out at about the 2048 level. Let's call it 2049. If you get it close to 2049, we should see a move up to 2090 out there, 2082 to 2090. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. Let's go take a quick peek and see what's going on under the covers by looking at those intraday charts. In fact, we have uh, the intraday charts. I'm going to just switch back to the two 60-minute panels for the ES and the NQ. Those are the ones to be watching, in my opinion. Yesterday, I believe, was the 30-minute charts we were looking at. Today, it is the 60-minute charts. Why the 60-minute charts, Steve-O? Well, the reason is because you've got a TD9 count top that has uh, completed uh, inside the ES Mini. That pattern went ahead and completed at uh, 10 a.m. Price should pull back and test its oscillator and change line at about 55.37. We take a look at the NQ. The NQ had completed a TD9 count top at 10 a.m. And at 11, as we're coming on the show, it went in and confirmed a seventh, a, a, a seventh move higher out there, wave number seven, part of Basil Chapman's toolkit and a Rhodesmith Dominicator top. Now, just because we have three tops on a 60 minute doesn't make it any stronger than if we had one top. What price should do here is pull back and test its oscillator and change line, a test and rejection of 19,997, would uh, be uh, would 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 do just that. That would suggest that okay, the move lower could or should be over. In the case of the ES Mini, that number again is 55.37. Inside the uh, Dow and inside the uh, Russell 2000, not really much there. Although uh, both are a little bit bullish, we did get a 60-minute close in the Dow above profile resistance. A second one would suggest you could see move up to the 39.911 area. And the Russell 2000 is trading above profile resistance. It may want to target. 2058. But it's going to take its P's and Q's from the ES and the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We come back to this break. We'll start looking at a couple of requests that have come in. Of course, Stevie would like more. Steve at TFN.com, 877-927-6648 or any ping inside our Tiger's Den. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. We still got a mixed bag out there. Dow's up 65. S&P is just slightly flat. No, just one slightly green right now. NASDAQ up 16. The Russell is up uh, six points out there. Let's take a look at our first request that came in. This actually came in yesterday. I didn't get it until after the show was over. And that was for Domino's Pizza. DPZ is a ticker symbol out there. And Tim was looking for support levels. So with regard to support for his daily time frame, Tim, and likely price is going to head down there, is a 513.20 level. I don't have a top. I just see a, a, a nice sideways consolidation since this uh, broke out. Let's go ahead and open up the daily chart. Let's go ahead and draw that consolidation pattern in there. Uh, so give me a moment here. Let's get our rectangular tool. Of course, we can use it for anything that we want. And it really looks like it started with that, that gap out there. And that was from that trading day of uh, April the uh, 26th. So you probably could actually put that consolidation bottom a bit lower. But there basically is your consolidation. So there's support for you at 513.20. Uh, if price closes below that, you know, I'd say it's going to go targeted swing point for May 31st. That's anywhere in the range of 499.50 up to 509.62. Let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Price is trading below its uh, first level of support, which is its oscillator and change line. That's at 524. So watch that daily uh, time frame. If price breaks through that consolidation, one, you'd have a measured move. To the downside, of the weekly chart would say price would could target the uh, 467 area. And on a monthly time frame, everything looks A-OK. -okay. So consolidation on the uh, daily, that's what I'd be paying attention to, Tim. And uh, resistance on that weekly would be at about the 524 38 level support on the monthly at 469. So thanks for waiting an extra day for that information and have a uh, terrific Thursday. Let's go out to uh, John in Philly. And uh, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. And thank you for taking the call. And Steve, I'm calling you today uh, to ask you if you would just uh, examine two wheat contracts. The uh, lead contracts of both Kansas City and Chicago wheat, that would be KEU, uh, Kansas City wheat is KEU4, the uh, Chicago wheat is ZWU4, 
Uh, if you could just your charts, please, and just uh, give me a quick answer on the daily and weekly charts. If your work supports a uh, uh, potential bottom, uh, full disclosure uh, earlier before they uh, before those contracts paused for trading. That's before eight forty five a.m. I bought both the, the ZWU4 and the KEU4 just because they had quit going down for uh, three days. Uh, so tell me what your work says, please. Excellent entry point. On the daily time frame, yesterday was the completion of a TD9 count bottom. Um, I don't really see an A to B equals C dependent downside. doesn't matter. You've got a bottom signal. Now, what price should do here, what the daily is suggesting, its next level of resistance or the first level of resistance is going to be in the 596 area. That's an oscillator and change line. And, John, as you know, that number is going to move up and down. So I'd say it's going to be more like the 597 area as price rallies. On the weekly chart, and this is probably what you also notice, was price was pulling back and testing its March lows out there. It never got down uh, to that low, which would have been at the uh, 550 level, and it still is not closed above the high. You'd love to see it close above the high tomorrow. The high is at 578.75 out there. Why? Because you'd have a test and rejection of a swing point. On a weekly basis, that was also a TD9 count bottom pattern. So that pattern is still in effect out there. We're outside of profile, so it's really more on the weekly basis, John, about the swing Point. And this, again, is the, the uh, uh, ZW contract that we are taking a look at for September. Any questions here Steve, before I move uh, over I'll to just, Kansas I'll City? I'll just mention here for your listeners uh, what you just observed I saw as well and, and what you uh, and I are uh, thinking about there with that weekly chart is something you and I were both taught uh, by Tom O'Brien, uh, declining into the high of the low bar. Uh, yeah. Try that one on for size. Exactly. I love it. No, it's true. It is absolutely true. And uh, thank goodness for uh, for uh, OB1. Let's take a quick absolutely. peek here. Let's take a quick peek at the uh, Kansas City contract. And really, you've got the exact same thing. Now, this actually bottom made the bottom with bar number eight. So this actually is suggesting maybe it's a little bit stronger. Uh, but either way, this should rally up towards its oscillator and change line. The current print on that is at 614. So call it 615 as a likely uh, line of demarcation. If price can close above that, unless there's new profiles that form, you should see a move up to the 664 low. But I don't have any profiles for the September contract. At this stage, price is below the daily, price is below the uh, weekly chart out there. And we have really that same signal. Now, in the case of the Kansas City uh, contract here, uh, for its weekly time frame, it has already tested and negated the high of that low swing point. That was from the swing point of March 8th. So it closed uh, tomorrow above 552, says that you could see a rally up towards 626. So we'll go with the 615 level first. If you get above that, then we're looking at probably, I would say it's more like 630 or so, 633. And uh, so a nice trade on your part. Uh, everything here in the daily and the weekly chart supports that for sure. Thanks so much on that, Steve. One last question, please. I, uh, yep. You know I wanted to ask you about uh, uh, Palo, El Palo Alto Networks, P-A-N-W. Yes. Yep. Uh, disclosure, uh, back in February, I bought the stock and have been long it since uh, somewhere in early March. Okay. After that, Feb Majamo, when they came out with earnings and it was far, you know, investors were uh, too optimistic and the stock got slammed. Now it's rallying. My question specifically on, on this, as you look at either the daily or the weekly chart, is there anything that you see that suggests book a profit now? So on the daily chart, to, for me, it looks like it wants to go and at least fill that gap, that gap down that you were referring to that took place on February 21st. You're inside that gap right now. I see A to B equals CD to the upside out there. The low of that gap and where it should at least run to, I'd say, John, is going to be the 359.82 level. And that's there's no other, you know, there is a Rosman Dominicator signal that's present. That requires a bearish reversal candle. That just says take your umbrella with you if you're going to go outside. That's all that that means at this time. So to me, the daily is suggesting wants to go close that gap. If we look at the weekly chart, it's supported by that as well. In fact, the weekly chart 
the, it's taken out a B point that did volume of 34 million shares. So far this week, we are at 10 million shares. So much lighter volume. But that doesn't mean that it won't go ahead and complete that A to B equals C depending on the upside. Price is trading above profile resistance. It's trading above green oscillator and change line. Those are what I consider to be breakout bull modes out there. So yes, it's got the A to B equals CD pattern, but this is also suggesting to me, John, that price should go fill that gap. And then lastly, on the monthly time frame, it's also trading above its oscillator and change line on the top of its profile. The month ends tomorrow. And so it closed tomorrow above 326.94. It says stay long. No, of course, anything right, that happened. Right, yeah, that's you know, that monthly. I'm glad you mentioned that with the end of the month and the quarter uh, tomorrow. Right, very good. Steve, yes. I, uh, sorry to take so much time, but thank you so much. We're all glad that you take up some time. Thank you for the call, and we'll look forward <laughs> okay. to speaking with you again. Bye yeah, now. That was you bet. That was John in Philly. So we come back from this break. Uh, Duncan inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at NVIDIA. Phil wants to take a look at um, COF. That is uh, Capital One, I believe. And uh, I don't see any other requests in, although I haven't looked inside the Tiger's Den for a few. But I'd love to hear from you folks. 877-927-6648. Oh, I see one here from Muhammad. So we, we've got another request. CMG. We'll also take a look at that. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYJUNE24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. On the end video out here, Duncan is asking a direction for the day out there. So, Duncan, to me, the direction should be to the downside at this moment. And the downside target should be in that 116.71 level. You've got a TD nine count pattern. It looks like you're going to get a TD nine count top that's going to go ahead and confirm tomorrow. All that it needs to do is close above well, the close of bar number five on the weekly chart, and that close, which was from the week of May 31st, was 109.63. So that TD nine count top should take price back to its oscillator and change line. Adding to the idea that price should head back there is the fact that price has run into resistance at the top of its pro at the bottom of its profile on a daily time frame. And that's at 125.35. Now you got back into it yesterday and the day before and uh, and, and that was really suggesting to us that price should have gone to target 129.75 but that's not the message at least at 1131 i would change my opinion on that duncan if price closed back above 125.35 at day's end otherwise it looks to me we're going to end the month tomorrow with bar number eight of a td9 count that says you could actually get a top that forms now or it could form in the next two months out there. I know that's a wide range, but it's a range at least. And so then we really pay attention to what's going on in the daily and the weekly. The daily has a, a wave number seven top out there. Um, so we know that that's in place. So as long as price remains above one, remains below 125.35, we're likely to get a further move lower. The concern I would have with regard to NVIDIA at this stage is that it's just a slight concern potentially is we did get our two bar rally our normal two bar type rally but what we've seen here in nvidia they're typically more like three consecutive days four consecutive days here's a four here's a three uh there's one two sixes sixes fives and sixes sevens eights nines so at this stage the question is was the uh, move that we just saw over the last two days simply a knee-jerk reaction high and we're headed lower? Now, I don't know the answer to that, but I am, am, but it is a very it's, it is a possibility out there. So at this stage here, let's just say the target is to the downside. We take this one step at a time, and 116-ish, 116.70 or so is likely to be where this is headed. Now, I'm not saying it's headed there today, but we did have that two-day rally. It would not be unusual now to see at least a two- to three-day they move lower out there so that's why i say the direction is likely to the um to the downside so i hope that helps you out uh duncan and thanks as always for that request uh, i didn't see anything sticking out well it was only a 130 minute chart let me take a quick peek here go down to a 30 minute chart oh this has got this has got hold on you know i'll start putting it um yeah maybe i'm not going to really be able to pull much up on this uh, set of charts out here. So, Doug, we're just going to go with what I gave to you at this stage of the game, and I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for putting in a request for us. Let's go take a look at our next request coming in from Phil inside the Tiger's Den. And Phil wants to take a look at Capital One. COF is the ticker symbol out here. Uh, as we take a look at Capital One, what do we know about it? Well, first, it's testing a real key area of support, and that's on the weekly time frame. So I know you want to know what's going on today, and we'll take a look at that, but really it's going to be about tomorrow. We can see that price is tested and rejected. The bottom of that profile for one, two, three, four solid weeks out there, we're testing that again today. It being 133 361. So you want to watch um, tomorrow's close. If price closes above that, you know, then a key level of support will have held. If that level of support fails, where is it headed to? I would have to say it's likely headed to the 130.18 ish area. That's coming from the oscillator and change line from the monthly time frame. Not that there is a top out there, but price is trading with inside its profile. Support being 125.26 and 143.77 being the resistance level. That's on the monthly chart. Let's expand out the daily see if we can pick up anything here and so we can so this had a td9 count bottom which i would note is the b point of a potential a to b equals cd to the downside so on a daily basis tops with a roads momentum indicator top moves down gets to a td9 count pattern rallies up towards its oscillator and change line so let's just simply go ahead and let's uh, copy and paste 
And then we got to do the most amazing thing about the CPA is the assembling part. So let's go assemble this and get up to where that next high comes in after that low, which is labeled A and is a top of a bearish structured daily profile. Now, the swing point that we're watching, let me just get my crosshairs out there. That, that takes us back to May 29th. Volume on that swing was 1.6 million shares. That was closed below with 2.6 million shares. So let me make sure. That close was, and I, the day I'm looking at six fourteen, one thirty three seventy. 1.3370. Was that a close below that low? Huh. It was right on the low, 133.70. All right, so that was not. So now it's really about today because we're trading below it today. So volume so far today, 1.5 million shares already going against 1.6. So if we get a close below 133.70, what this is telling us is that this should go ahead and at least move towards that A to B equals CD pattern. The price projection there is 124. Now, now that we at least know that, you know what to be looking for today. The price may reject that. It might close back above that swing point. I just don't know. I just know what it is that you need to watch for out there. So then that would suggest if we're going to do that, probably tomorrow we see a close below the weekly profile level of support, and that gives us that move lower. Now there is support on that uh, weekly time frame at 120, uh, monthly time frame 125 and 130. This gets us down towards that 125 level on that daily time frame. So Phil, that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Capital One out there. Let me know if there's anything else that you need. Next request coming in from uh, Mohammed. Mohammed, about to take a look at two instruments. Uh, CMG, Chipotle is the uh, first one. Chipotle has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price is trading with inside its profile. It's a very large bullet structured profile, Mohammed. The support zone is between 62.40 and 63.93. We're trading inside that support zone as we speak. The weekly time frame chart has a Rosemont indicator top. It has a support zone, also a bullish structured profile, and that is between 61.19 and 62.72. So you got 62.72 as a possible area of support on the monthly, I'm sorry, on the weekly, 62.40 on the daily. You close below 62.40, we're headed to 61.89. You could get or should get, you will get a TD9, you'll get a bar number eight on a monthly time frame says you could get a top between this this month and the next two out there so from a volume standpoint um, a swing point on a daily basis on june 3rd that swing did volume of 332,000 shares so far today you've got whoa holy snikes 332 you've got 9.8 million shares today wow so that's a big move. Anyways, looks to me, Mohammed, like you should watch this uh, 6240 area. Again, it closed below that. You should see 6189 out there. So I hope that helps you out. Hey, you've got a second request. Let's go to that one. That one is for Workday, W-D-A-Y out there. We take a look at Workday. It's likely going to go target. It's a gap to, well, it's going to go target the 228.18 level. The reason I say that is right now, if we get it close today above 220, even Steven, we're trading right now at 221, price will close above the top of its daily profile. And that would then suggest that we rally further out there. Well, the next level of resistance that I see out here is the center. Is that the center or is that the top? It's the top of its weekly profile. That's at 228.18. So I know you're in at the 223 level. Um, it looks to me like it should at least get back to the 228.18 level. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In 
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Peter from Park City want to take a look at the December wheat contract out there. And Peter, we got that same TD9 count bottom pattern on the daily time frame, the weekly time frame for December. The cool thing about it is a price pulled back, tested and rejected its breakout level at 581.50. So the daily time frame suggests that you should see a rally towards 620. That's a daily asset and change line. That is, unless there's some other profile that forms you know, between now and then. The weekly chart is suggesting that price should rally towards a 6 42 level. That would be the bottom of its weekly time frame. You can see on the monthly time frame chart, although I can't guarantee that it's a TD9 count bottom, it should be out there. I just want to put in more data bars than we've got. This is all that my system's able to pull up. But it looks like, and I believe we saw that or I saw that on the September contracts as well. But again, I'd want to just verify, put up a continuous just to make sure we've got the right bar data out there on the uh, monthly time frame. But everything looks uh, very good out there. Now, the cool thing here, what you can watch is consecutive days, and this uh, applies to uh, John as well uh, for the uh, September contracts out there. If we take a look at this, we have not seen more than, uh, we've not seen a, even a two-day knee-jerk reaction move to the upside. Today is going to be the first one. What I'm saying, that is, I'm referring to the top that formed back in uh, on May 28th out there. So as long as that continues to extend itself and then on pullbacks, it's not really any more than a four-day pullback, preferably just a two-day two pullback out there, then uh, both you guys are on the uh, road to uh, success out there. But you didn't need Stevie to help you out. I do can see on this December contract for its 30-minute time frame, you are in bar number eight as we speak right now. So you could get a uh, price has got a spike above the high of that last uh, bar number seven. So you got to see at least a spike above 600.75 for the TD9 count on a 30 minute basis to even come into effect out there. So, Peter, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. As always, good to hear from you. What a great time of the year to be out in Park City. I got to imagine. All right. Summer. It's a you know, it depends whether you're a summer person or a winter person. You can be both. And uh, out there, the summers are just simply beautiful. Let's go to our next request. That is to take a look at TGM. That is for Dano in, uh, Dan from New York inside the Tigers. End. Was it? No, it wasn't TGM. I don't think that was it. Shoot, what did you want? Let me find it out there because that's I obviously wrote down the wrong thing. Where did Dan put that? From Dan from New York. TGB. What the heck? TGM I put in. TGB. I should have figured that out, but, you know, 
uh, I'm not really good at chewing gum, walking, running, all that kind of stuff out there. Um, so let's TGB. Come on, it's taking a little while here to um, to go. So great place for athletes like you, always hungry when you leave seasons 52. That snowball. Uh, you just got to order more of those little desserts and those little jars out there. That will fill you up. Um, hey, get two of those uh, uh, flatbread pizzas. We're just inside the Tigers and we're talking a little bit about pizza. And I do love pizza, but I don't eat it very, very often. But we do. How do you not have that uh, need for that flavor? For me, it's a pepperoni pizza. I grew up in Detroit, uh, as most of you know, and they've got some great pizza up there. Buddies, Shields out there. I mean, it's great thick pizza. Uh, similar to the Chicago, but uh, Chicago pizza's got that sausage on the bottom, which I'm not really a fan of on my uh, pizza out there. I'm more of a shakaroni, pepperoni kind of a uh, guide. Season 52, in my opinion, they've got the best so you can get that flavor of that pepperoni pizza flatbread. I don't think there's much in the way of uh, uh, too many calories. I doubt uh, it's over 400 or something out there. So uh, anyways, just uh, some pizza talk inside the Tigers. But now that we got to Seiko Mines, TGB on our screens, let's go to them. So what do we see out here, Dan? Um, we see that price is trying to get back inside its daily profile. So if price closed the day below 246, we're at 245 right now. Does the penny make a difference? Makes a difference on Stevie's charts. If we close back inside its profile, it, and not that I have a top out here, it's just simply increase the odds of a further move back. The further move back would be to its buy zone. The buy zone is between 230 and 235. So you want to watch 246 today. What happens if price stays above 246 today, Steve-O? Well, then, you're trading between resistance, which is the oscillator and change line, at 252, and support at that uh, 246 level the uh, top of its profile. And then you're kind of in like a no man's land out there. So the question is, will close blow support or close above resistance? That's really what we're looking for. And we don't have that signal yet on a daily time frame. The weekly time frame shows what? Shows we are trading back inside its profile. It's been consolidating the side there for the last four weeks. Resistance here is 261. So Dan, if we could see a close above 261, then you'd be closing above profile resistance and above its green oscillator and change line. Doing that would suggest that we see a rally out there. When we take a look at the monthly time frame. It looks as if we will end the month, this is tomorrow, with a Rhodesman to indicator top. So that's suggesting a pull back to 198. So Watch the daily. The first signal of a move back to the 198 level would be, you know, a close below 246. Then the second thing would be how does price handle 220, uh, 220 or the 230 to 235 level. If it closed below that, then we'd be heading to 220, and then below that, the so-called dollar 98 level. So Dan, hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Ronan inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at uh, OHI. And Ronan is looking for some reason to have to sell this. Well, on a daily time frame, you absolutely do not have that. There was a new profile that formed yesterday. Uh, oh, 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 hold on a minute here. Nope, you don't have a reason just yet, but you could have a reason by days in. So let's take a look at this. What, 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 what did you see, Stevie? I see that we're in bar number nine. Now, the high of this pattern so far, Ronan, is bar number six, the day of June 24th. So if price ticks above that high, so first, you're going to get a TD9 count pattern. You're not going to get a TD9 count top unless you see price tick above the high from four days ago, and that is above 33.86. So far, the high of the day has been 33.86. It's even Steven. That's not good enough. It has to tick above that level. If it doesn't tick above that level today or tomorrow, then this says stay with the trade because you would have no reason to sell, no reason on the daily time frame, and you'd be in a bullish breakout mode. So really, we won't know if there's a signal to sell until you see price poke above that today or perhaps tomorrow. And if it doesn't do that, then the daily start chart says stay. If we take a look at the weekly chart, Bar number eight this week. Well, this says that we could see a top between this week and the next two. Not really. So that says really pay attention to the daily because if you don't get the topping pattern on the daily, then the weekly says, oh, you know what? I want to go test my swing point high for back in October, October 20th. And that uh, swing point did volume of 8.4 uh, million shares. You're trading inside that swing point as we speak. Well, what kind of volume? Lower volume, 5.7 million shares. So on a daily basis, this typically does about... Yesterday it did 
1 million shares. So you may be coming into that swing point with lighter volume. Nonetheless, even if you close inside a swing point with lighter volume, you still can go test its high. Its high being the 3477 mark. And then lastly, as we take a look at that monthly time frame chart, you've, the only reason to potentially sell is monthly is right up at resistance 3389. So I would say if you can get that tick above the bar from four days ago, then you'd have your reason to sell in the daily time frame. Otherwise, I don't know who's going to win this battle at 3389 out there. So that's just something else for you to consider. So I hope that helps you out. We come back from this break. We'll just have a few moments left, but we're going to take a look at ticker symbol BR. PH, and that is for peak G inside the Tiger Zone, which right now we can see is headed up towards resistance or really got up there this morning. The high so far today is 1269. Daily resistance up at 1274. But let's finish the review of this chart. I do see a monthly T9 count pattern that's going to go ahead and confirm tomorrow. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We will be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Galaxy Digital Holdings out there. That's for Peak G inside the Tigers. And so Peak, this formed to sell the D-point pattern up here. It actually confirmed that on June the 12th. Price moved lower. It got below the bottom of its profile. It got uh, below the uh, top of the weekly profile. I don't see a reason for this to have bottomed. However, here's the reason. Or here's the only bottom signal that I see out there. And that's understanding it's its dance steps. So this makes a four bar move to the downside. It does that on June 14th. Then it just kind of moves up and down for four consecutive days. And then it makes a two bar move to the downside. We blasted off of that. Now we are in bar number three to the upside out there. 
and we're up into the area where there's top of the profile, which is at 1274, and with lighter volume. I wouldn't expect it to bust through that level out there. So you're up towards resistance. The weekly still has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. It's got that bear shooting star candle. That swing point has volume of 810,000 uh, shares, and we're up with, with 335. So it looks like even though you're above profile level and a screen oscillator and change line, and knowing you've got resistance at 1274, I can't suggest that it's really going to go test that high. Maybe it does. It's bullish conditions on the weekly. However, uh, it's neutral really on the weekly chart out there, but the volume is so light. The monthly chart says you're going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top tomorrow. Now, that high can come uh, on the following month out there, but um, you got tops on the weekly, a topping pattern is going to be on the monthly, the daily struggling here at resistance. Looks to me like this is getting ready to pull back again out there, peak. So that's what I see. But let's take a look at it next month. That means on Monday out there. Hope that helps you out. We're going to close out with Nike that's out with earnings after the bell today. We take a look at Nike. You just have a consolidation with inside the daily profile. Support out here is at 93.22. On a further move lower, you'd see support at 91.96. Your resistance level is up at 97.44. That's a daily time frame. Am I seeing any kind of a signal here as to what? Nike should do after earnings? The answer is no. The weekly chart is a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profiles. 90.50 at support and 97.44 for resistance. And the monthly chart, price is trading below profile support, which at 96.66 and its red oscillator and change line. All of that suggests you could easily see Nike pull back and test its TD9 count bottom that takes us back into the October 22 time frame, anywhere between 106.37 and I'm sorry, anywhere between 82.22 and 94.35 or so. Folks, have a terrific Thursday. I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp on Fantastic Friday. Have a great day and be safe out there.